If you're like me and you live underneath a rock, you probably have put off planning for Valentine's Day and now you're gonna have to go do the stereotypical, go to a fancy restaurant and spend a lot of money and completely blow your budget for the month in one night. But I'm here to tell you that you do not have to go and completely obliterate your budget just to have a romantic and intentional date night. In fact, in this video, what I wanna go over is actually four ideas and ways that you can make date night not only memorable and fun and intentional, but also budget safe. The reasons why a lot of us spend a ton of money on Valentine's Day or on date nights is because we think that in order to have a romantic evening, we need to spend a lot of money. But I think that comes down to the fact that we don't put on our thinking caps and become creative in ways that we can be intentional with one another on a date night. Before we get into tip number one, be sure if you do like this video to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All right, let's get down to tip number one on ways that you can stay budget friendly while on a Valentine's Day date or any date for that matter, and that is doing the classic road trip. And road trips, they can be something that if done right, can be very economical and budget friendly, and you can have a lot of fun and make it very, very memorable. The basics with a road trip is that you have to just have a destination or a place that you're gonna go or something that you're gonna see. So you can do something as simple as Google scenic places or scenic locations around where you live, or you can do things like Google where the local farmers markets are, or Google where local music festivals are. A lot of times they're held in just your local parks, you just don't happen to notice them. Or something that's completely free of spending any money is to just go drive around in a neighborhood or a town that you don't normally go to and just explore the area and see what there is. The important thing on a date road trip is that you have the necessary supplies to make it fun, to make it romantic, and to make it memorable. And one of the things you absolutely need for any of those is snacks and food. So one thing that you can do is brew at your house either coffee or hot chocolate, put it in one of those thermos things so that it stays hot, and then just take it with you on your road trip. That way, if you do end up getting out of the car, and especially around this time of year, when Valentine's Day normally is in February, it can be cold, and if you go and watch the sunset or something like that, you'll have some nice hot cocoa with maybe even some marshmallows to sip on while you see the sunset. Also, make sure you bring pillows and blankets. I don't know what it is about pillows and blankets, but whenever you take them on a road trip, it just makes it feel more memorable. It makes it feel like you're not just getting in the car to drive somewhere, like you're almost going on a vacation or something like that. So take some pillows and blankets and take them with you, if you're, especially if you're gonna go to like a scenic place. That way you can get all covered up and, and watch the sunset together. The last thing when it comes to a date road trip that you absolutely 100% need, in fact, I think this is probably the most important thing you need for any date, and especially on a road trip, and that is a killer playlist. So before you go on the date road trip, comprise a playlist, make sure it's stuff that you both like, and when in doubt, go with stuff on your playlist that you can sing to. Because when you find something that you can sing along with together, that is gonna be way more fun way more memorable and it's going to put down like emotional barriers that you might have put up or whatever. So find some songs that you can sing along to in the car. Idea number two of things that you can do on a budget Valentine's Day date or any date for that matter and that is to do the classic hike and picnic. After all, hiking is something that is totally free to do and if you pick the right picnic items, it's also going to be very budget friendly and cheap. Hiking is great because you're gonna be out in the great outdoors, it costs no money, and it's great for exercise, so you get that added little bonus tip in there. It's also great for bonding time, as I recommend if you're gonna go out on a hike, turn your phone off or put on airplay mode so that you're not distracted by social media and all this other stuff, you know, the temptation to post things on Snapchat or Instagram, just wait until it's all over with and just spend the time together on your hike. Putting your phone away while you're on a hike is actually going to force you to talk and to learn more about each other. So it's gonna make it way more intentional and way more memorable for the two of you. And just like with the road trip, another key element to a hike and picnic is bringing snacks and bringing food. 
The best type of snacks to bring on a hike is things like trail mix, which of course you can go to the store and buy it for really cheap, or you can make it yourself. And the benefit to that is that if you make it yourself, you get the added benefit of not having to sift through all the obstacles like raisins because no one wants a raisin in their trail mix. They want peanuts and they want M&Ms or Reese's Pieces. Those are what should really only be in trail mix. So if you make it yourself at your house, that's what you can do. You can put just those two things in there and you'll be much happier for it. Another thing you can do if you wanna be extra here is you can go to the grocery store and pick up a steak, not the super expensive ones, you know, the ones that are like $10 or less. And then on your hike, when you get to a certain spot, you can create a little fire and then get your cast iron out, your cast iron pan and grill up that steak. You know, get a little thyme, get a little oil, steak sauce, whatever you need. And you can have a nice open fire steak that you roasted yourself. I mean, that that's pretty romantic, I would say. All right, enough of the outdoors. Let's move on to the great indoors because sometimes it can get a little scary outside. And not only that, but you know, usually around Valentine's Day, it's cold outside. So let's go inside and see what we can do in there. Tip number three, idea number three, is that you can do an indoor game night. You know, bring on the friendly competition here. In my opinion, if you're going to do an indoor date night with like a game night, it might be best to do a double date night with some of your friends. That way, the more the merrier and the more people you have playing a game, it can be more fun, but you don't want it to get too big, so maybe just a double date. And then from there, you can do fun things like you could play board games or video games. My recommendation, if you're going to play a board game, make sure it's not a board game that takes an hour and a half to explain, and then more than that to even play, as unless you guys are avid board game players, you're gonna get bored of it and tired of it real quick and it's gonna kill the mood. So pick something that you can pick up and play and explain in like five minutes if the person already has an experience in how to play it. If you're gonna go the video game route, classic games are always perfect for that, especially games that are built around being party games like Mario Party and Mario Kart and Super Smash Bros. Unless you're someone like me who's really good at Super Smash Bros. and then none of your friends wanna play it so you can't play it with them. So maybe avoid a game like that if you're really good at it. But my biggest recommendation, if you're going to do a double date night with an indoor game night, my top 10 recommendation for a game to play is the games called Jackbox games. And if you don't know what they are, they're games that you can play on your TV if you have a smart TV or if you do have a console of some kind. Usually the games are comprised around people being either witty or the smartest in the room or the most funny. And to me, that is my bread and butter. I love doing that type of stuff. So that's my 100% go-to. I'm actually gonna be leaving a link down in the description to my favorite Jackbox party pack. And so after the video, if you wanna go check that out, you can do so and you'll, you'll see um, what all the fuss is about. And finally, idea number four that you can use to have a memorable, intentional, fun, and budget-friendly date night, either this Valentine's Day or any date night, is just to do some type of project together. Like I said in the beginning of the video, a lot of the times we feel the pressure to go out and spend a lot of money on a date is because we feel that we can't come up with something that would be memorable and would be fun for the other person. But most of the time, it's just because we're either not thinking hard enough or we're just getting lazy with it. And so put on your thinking cap and think of different projects and fun things you can do either around the house or outside that would be fun for the both of you. So I kind of just wrote down some ideas here. You don't necessarily have to do these, but I feel like all these ideas you can either do for little to no money at all. You can go to the dollar store and pick up paint and art supplies and paint a picture together. You know, get art supplies and look up on Google a scene or some type of landscape and then have a competition to see who can paint something that looks closest to that, who can who could paint the best picture. If you're musical at all, and the both of you are musical, or if you're not musical at all, it doesn't matter, you can, in 30 minutes to an hour, try to compose a song. Another idea, which I think is gaining more and more popularity for some reason with millennials and, and people in my age group, and that is to solve a jigsaw puzzle. But just use your imagination to come up with ideas. Plan out a spring garden, plan out your will, plan out, you know, redesign a room in your home that you wanna completely do 
want to have more money or something like that. There's a lot of things that if you simply just think about it and simply just put your mind to trying to plan things and being intentional, you can actually save yourself some money and make the night very romantic and memorable and intentional and you're gonna have a lot of fun while doing it. So don't be afraid to kind of think outside the box and think of ways that the two of you would have a lot of fun either staying at home or doing something outside or just driving around in your car. But anyway, I just wanted to share this video with you as I know Valentine's Day is coming up and if you're anything like myself, you struggle with coming up with fun date nights to do with, you know, for me, with my wife. I just want to make this video to help encourage you or inspire you and hopefully you will take some of these ideas and take them to heart and actually apply them this Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. Like I said before, like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as I typically post things regarding budgeting, um, building wealth, investing and things of the financial nature. This one's just more niche because you know Valentine's Day is coming and I need to get my uh, stuff together. Anyway, take care and thank you so much for watching.